Hey, thank you for checking out another short devotion and Merry Christmas. It will be here very soon, just a couple of days. And today I want to play a little game with you. Um, this is a game we play with the teenagers at the Christmas party um, a few weeks back. And it is called Would You Rather. Now, the whole point of the Would You Rather game is you present two really good choices or two really bad choices. And you have to make a decision on which one of those you would rather do. And I want to take that and I want to use it with the Christmas story. We're here to Christmas story over and over again. We're, we're quite familiar with the characters of the Christmas story. And I want to play a little game of Would You Rather Christmas Edition and listen to some of these characters and decide which one of these characters would you rather be. Now when you think about this, there's a couple of other factors in mind. Maybe you would rather be a one character, but when you hear the other character described, you kind of hear more of yourself in the characters you wouldn't want to be and less of yourself in the character you would want to be. And that could be a, a real opportunity to evaluate the, the way that um, we live life, the way we make decisions, the way we set priorities, or maybe the way that we respond to that Bible verse to walk by faith rather than by sight. There may be things we want to go to God with and say, God, help me to adjust this. Help me to focus on this. But with all that said, I want you to listen to all these characters. I want you to listen to the, the short description of each character. And of course, you can learn more about these characters by digging into the scriptures themselves and, and having that one-on-one -on -one time with God in prayer and with reading the scripture as he leads you to, to um, which character or at least which traits demonstrated by this character you would rather have in your own life. Now let's look at the first one. Um, of course, Mary. Mary is known for her willingness to serve and obey God, even though it brought much difficulty and heartbreak into her life. By faith, she believed anything she sacrificed to serve God would totally be worth it. Then you got Joseph, who is known for his willingness to serve and obey God despite the hardships. But also Joseph is known for being a little late to the party, wasn't quite ready to take that step of faith right off the bat. But as he struggled with his honest doubt, God revealed to him spiritual understanding. And as a result, he did choose to walk by faith. And then there's Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth is known for her ability to recognize who God has gifted for great things. Um, she has excitement and, and willingness to support those people, to encourage those people, and um, to, to help them as they pursue their calling. Um, she has no need for her or even her child to be considered first or to be in the spotlight, but rather she found pleasure in supporting those that God has called to lead the way. And then her husband, Zechariah, he's known for his desire to please God and his desire to, to seek God. However, he struggled with negativity. This negativity prevented him from being able to proclaim the great things that God was going to do. But God would eventually strengthen his faith and lift him above this negativity so that he could celebrate the great things that God was doing. And then you have the wise men. These guys were gifted in so many ways. Their knowledge and their wealth put them in a position to live quite comfortably. But they believed that their gifts had a purpose. And as a result, they left their comfort zone and invested many months and many miles just for an opportunity to devote their gifts before Jesus, whom they considered their king. And then we got King Herod. This guy knew the scriptures. He believed the scriptures. He dwelled on the words of the prophets daily. But he hated what he read. He refused to submit to God's will and, choose to, and he chose to do everything in his power to make sure that things went his way rather than God's way. Um, as a result, 
his knowledge of the scripture devastated families and the lives of infants were sacrificed just so that he could enjoy his personal preferences. And then you got the shepherds. They're known for ranking at the bottom of the social order. Um, these guys had a life of loneliness and ridicule. They knew their place and they understood that they didn't have much to offer. However, with humble faith, they took everything that they had and they presented it to God. They went to God and said, God, we don't have much, but everything we have and everything we are, we give to you. Um, this is something that pleased God. And the shepherds also knew that it pleased God to take the little and do much with it. That God always took the little and achieved miraculous results. And because of the desire to love and search for God with all they had and all they were, they found themselves at the very beginning of the list. And they received the very first opportunity to bless the heart of God. They received one of the very first opportunities to worship the newborn king. So which one of these characters would you rather be? Perhaps you see many traits in several of them that you want in your life. So, in a step of faith, through prayer and continuing to study the scriptures, seek to live out those characteristics. So when you look at Jesus face to face one day and he reads your story out loud, you will be known to be that character that you would rather be. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking this out. If you have anything that you want to pray about or just need to um, share some of the things that's on your heart, feel free to give us a call here at First Baptist Honey Path. We'd love to hear what's going on and love to lift you up in prayer as well. Y'all have a great day and a Merry Christmas.